Okay, in this video we are going to do a scalar line integral along a line segment going in two different directions. So first from 0, 0 to 1, 2, and then from 1, 2 to 0, 0. So let's go through the process and see what we get. Uh, first thing we want to do is figure out the path that we're following. So we're going to go from 0, 0 to 1, 2. So I like to call the path R of T. Um, and so x starts at 0 and goes to 1. So I'm going to write that as 0 plus 1t, right? Delta x is 1, so it's 0 plus delta x times t, so 0 plus t. I'm going to do that with pretty much all of my line parts. Um, so for y, for example, it goes um, from 0 to 2. So it starts at 0, delta y is 2, so it's 0 plus 2t. And then every time you parameterize a line segment like this, t is going to go from 0 to 1. Um, which is a little weird, like all your line integrals end up going from 0 to 1, but that, it just makes it easier, so not really a problem. Um, I have to remember what a line integral looks like. So it's the integral along c of f of x, y, and then ds. That ds is really important to this. I mean, it's given in the problem, but um, it's important that you recognize what the differential is. So ds is what we're working with. So uh, we know it'll be the integral from 0 to 1. And then uh, we need to parameterize our function. So our function's up here, it's one plus x times y squared. So it's gonna be one plus x is just t, and then y is uh, 2t, and we're gonna square that, so 2t squared. And then uh, we need ds. So ds, hopefully you remember, is the magnitude of our prime of t dt. So I guess I'm gonna to have to find r prime of t. r prime of t, so since it's a linear function uh, or a linear path, uh, r prime is a little easier to find. So it's gonna be the derivative of t is one and the derivative of two t is two. And there we go. So the magnitude of that is gonna be the square root of one squared plus two squared. So the square root of five and then dt. And this is gonna be, pull out the radical five, kind of simplify things and let's integrate. So just reversing the power rule here, and from zero to one, when we plug in uh, one, we get radical five and then times two, and when we plug in zero, we get zero. So we just got two radical five, and that's our answer. Now what we wanna do is the same problem, but we wanna go in the opposite direction. So our problem is exactly the same, except now we wanna go from one, two, and end at zero, zero. So our path is a little bit different, um, or at least the direction along the path. So we still need to find r of t. So in this case, a little more complicated because we start at one, we end at zero, which means we're gonna do delta x is negative one, so it's gonna be one minus t. For y, we start at two, end at zero, delta y is negative two, so it's gonna be two minus two t. And you kind of get the sense, uh, this is just gonna make everything a little bit worse. I mean, it's not terrible, but a little worse and then t will go from zero to one. So if you're organized about these, they're pretty simple. Um, they're kind of like substitution problems, as long as you remember what to do. Let's write down the line integral we're gonna find. I mean, it was actually given in the problem, but in general, you wanna write it down and do our substitutions as much as possible. So we're going from zero to one. Um, our function is one plus x in this case is one minus t. So the quantity one minus t and then y is two minus two t, um, and we need to square that, so it's the quantity two minus two t squared. And then all of this is ds, but we need to replace ds. So ds is the magnitude of r prime of t, dt. So let's find r prime of t. And again, it's linear, so not that difficult. The derivative of one minus t is negative one, and the derivative of two minus two t is negative two. And then uh, the magnitude of that is the square root of negative one squared plus negative two squared, but that's just square root of five again. So square root of five dt. Uh, all right, let's see. So take out the square root of five. Um, still gonna be the quantity one plus uh, one minus t. And then this two minus two t squared is really just two times one minus t quantity squared. Um, so two squared is four. So actually I'm gonna write uh, four here. 
from there. From in there, I took out 2 squared. And then I have 1 minus t times 1 minus t squared, so it's going to be the quantity 1 minus t cubed. And then uh, dt. So I want to integrate this. Um, square root of uh, integrating 1, I get t. Integrating 4, the quantity 1 minus t to the third. So plus 1 times the reciprocal, so the 4s cancel. But then um, by the chain rule, there should have been a negative. So I'm actually going to get negative quantity 1 minus t to the fourth. If that's confusing, just like sit down and do the u substitution. You'll see that you end up there. And we need to evaluate from 0 to 1. Uh, so when you plug in 1, you get the square root of 5 times uh, 1 minus 0. So we get 1 there. And then minus, when you plug in 0, you get uh, 0 minus 1 to the 4. So just negative 1. Like that. You always got to be careful when you plug in 0. People always want it to just 0 out, but it, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so we end up getting 2 root 5, and that's good because we're trying to illustrate the fact that when you have a line integral with respect to arc length, the uh, direction you follow the path doesn't matter. You can go from A to B or go from B to A. You'll get the same answer, um, and that's what we did. All right, so that's kind of two examples. It's really one example. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.